Democrats need to own up to taxes because they can't have their cake and eat it too. From the CNN Money Newsroom, I'm Ali Velshi. This is your money. In the next five minutes, I'm going to tell you what others won't about the fiscal cliff. The head of Starbucks says it will be damaging to America's financial reputation. More on taxes and shenanigans from Democrats on Capitol Hill. And if you had a cool 500 bucks to spend, should you use them now to buy a share in Apple? On the money menu, Apple says it's going to start building some of its iconic Mac computers in the U.S. Right now, Macs are assembled in China. Listen to what Apple CEO Tim Cook said to NBC's Brian Williams. And so we've been working for years on doing more and more in the United States. Next year, we will do one of our existing Mac lines in the United States. But Apple stock has been singing the blues for the last few months. The share price has plummeted 25% off its all-time high, and it took a beating this week, 6.5% lower yesterday. Apple is up more than a percent today, currently trading around 544 bucks a share. So is now a good time to get in? You're all asking me this. I'm asking Katie Stockton. She's a market analyst at MKM Partners in Connecticut. Katie, is Apple stock down off its high, a phenomenally successful stock to hold for so many investors? We're going to show them the chart again you look at technical trading patterns in the stock do they tell you that it is time to buy sell or hold this stock they tell you it's time to buy and I say that because we really need to keep the pullback from yesterday of about 6.4 percent into perspective where it follows a relief rally of about 17 and a half percent so because of that it actually has not generated any kind of breakdown in, in the stock in fact Apple came back down and tested a level that it reached at the March, or I'm sorry, the May low, and that's an area where it has seen buying pressure in the past. So it would be a natural level for buyers to come back into Apple. And momentum is really not as bad as it felt yesterday from a longer term perspective. The longer term uptrend for Apple is still very much intact here. All right, so while we got you, if it's at 450, 445 bucks, 545 bucks, and you're thinking it might still be an opportunity to get in, is there a number where it should be a time to get out? Certainly. The initial resistance, as we call it, is around $600. That's where Apple has met selling pressure pretty recently. I think that's a conservative upside target for the intermediate term. It's about 10% above current levels. And beyond that, if we see a breakout above that level, I think we could look at $700 again, which is where we peaked in September. Kate, I don't know how you get any work done uh, during the day because people actually think you know something about Apple. They ask, they, I don't know anything about it, and all they do is ask me whether they should buy the stock. Thank you for telling our viewers uh, what you think. Katie Stockton joining us now. Uh, listen, Americans could be singing the blues as well if Congress doesn't act to avert the fiscal cliff. For instance, the longer Congress waits, the more complicated it gets for businesses to figure out how much to pay workers early next year. The, conclu uh, the confusion could cost employers money, especially small businesses, which use payroll software, which takes time away from actually running their business. Now, Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz agrees. He told Poppy Harlow on Wednesday that the fiscal cliff will be seismic and significant. This single issue has a seismic effect on the rest of the world, that we have never been as connected. And the domino effect of a bad outcome here will have significant negative consequences domestically and around the world. Negative consequences, seismic or not, none of that is stopping Starbucks' plans to open 1,500 more cafes across America next year and just as many around the world. But we get his point. Speaking of the fiscal cliff, we all know what the parameters of a deal in Congress will look like, right? On taxes, Republicans will give in on raising taxes on the wealthiest 2%, and Democrats will agree to rein in tax breaks, right? Well, except the Democrats on Capitol Hill are fighting hard to preserve the tax deduction for state and local taxes. That costs the federal budget more than $80 billion a year. Why? Because seven of the eight states where taxpayers use the deductions the most are blue or Democratic states. Take a look. New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, all solidly blue with some of the highest state local taxes state and local taxes taken out there, including property taxes. The tax deductions on them tend to benefit higher income taxpayers, by the way, in states that consistently deliver for the Democrats. I get the politics of this, but Democrats need to own up. They can't have their cake and eat it, too. In the end, we're all going to pay more or we're going to get less if we're serious about getting our fiscal house in order. If Dems are serious about getting Republicans to break with ideology and their party base to vote for higher tax rates, 
Democrats have to be willing to do the same and break with their base. Both sides can go back to their politics after they get this right and avert a fiscal cliff before January 1st. So quit scrapping. Get it work done. Get the work done now, Congress. All right, finally, something you may not know. According to a new study, gay people earn more than other Americans. A survey of 1,000 gay people conducted by Prudential reported that annual incomes were more than $11,000 higher than the national median income of $50,000 a year. What's more, the survey shows that gays carry less debt than other Americans do, $4,000 less than the national average. Prudential said they are more likely to, save, uh, to have a job, to save money, and to build up more equity in their homes. Why? Well, Prudential suggests that the uncertainty of the future of gay rights over the years may have prompted them to be more prudent with their money. Interesting. All right, that's it from the newsroom, the CNN Money Newsroom in New York. I'm Ali Velshi. That's what you need to know. If, however, you want to know more, watch Your Money this weekend, Saturday at 1, Sunday at 3 Eastern. I'm out. Same time tomorrow.